All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is going to be our Facebook audiences tutorial. Uh, we're going to be going over how to create some of the different audiences in Facebook um, and how to use them in your advertising campaigns. Um, so we're going to actually focus more on the advertising campaigns part in a follow-up video, but in this video, we really want to focus on how to create audiences and some of the different audience types there are in Facebook that you might not even be aware of. So to get started, this is a Facebook <clears throat> business page with their, all their ad targeting. So I just kind of want to go over some of the options they have in kind of a clean way. Um, so you have three different main options when you're building audiences. So core audiences are audiences that you're going to create basically based on characteristics, age, location, it's saying. Uh, so basically demographics, interests, and behaviors you use for the most part. Um, so, you know, you might say males who are interested in football who also, you know, buy football gear. Um, and then you target them with a football ad. So that's kind of how that works. Um, custom audiences, so you actually upload lists to Facebook, uh, whether it's a customer list, whether it's uh, a customer buying list, an email list. Um, so anything where you have customer data saved, you upload it to Facebook and they match it to people on Facebook. Lookalike audiences are created automatically by Facebook using your custom audiences usually. So uh, what that means is, so I upload my email list um, and my email list is all pretty similar. Um, you're not going to have this wide array of people. You're going to have a similar age range, similar interests. So what Facebook does with lookalike audiences is they find the people that are closest to the people on your email list, the people that are closest to the people that are on your, you know, remarketing audiences, all sorts of things like that. So custom audiences would also include your remarketing audiences and things like that. Um, so really any custom audiences is really any audience that you have that's collected that is interacted with what you do. So anybody who's watched your, um, who, you know, who downloads your app and uses it, anyone who watches your videos on Facebook, anyone who watches your videos on Instagram. So all sorts of those things are custom audiences that I'm going to show you how to create. And then lookalikes are audiences that you build based on your custom audiences, all the data that's in there. Um, so keep scrolling down. So it's going to show, uh, choose the people you want to reach, demographics, location, interest, behaviors, um, and then get in touch with people you want to know. So this is kind of like, really to get closer to it. So you can upload lists of loyal and potential customers. So these are for custom audiences, loyal and potential customers, website visitors, and mobile users. Um, we're not going to go over as much offline data and mobile app users, but just know that, you know, that is an option that you have. It's just not as popular for people because most people don't have an app or an actual physical store. Um, but if you do, what you want to do is make sure you connect your app to Facebook, to your Facebook page, and then you can just have your app, all the data that happens in your app, Facebook will track, and then you could use it to create retargeting audiences, you could use it to, you know, all sorts of things with, with uh, your mobile app. Um, and then with your offline set, you could do the same exact thing where, let's say you have a local store, um, you know, maybe you're a barber or something like that, and you have a list of 100 local customers and, you know, all their data, whether it's, you know, their name, their phone number, their email, different things like that. You can actually upload that to Facebook and use that to target people. So you can say, you know, time for a new haircut, get $2 off your next haircut, whatever it is. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is we have our Facebook open here um, and it's, we're in power editor. So we use business manager um, and you should have a main page like this when you sign into your ads manager uh, with all of your campaigns that you're running and different things like that. So what we're going to do is click on the top corner here where it says power editor and we're going to come over to assets and click on audiences so this is where you're going to manage everything for your audiences um, and we're going to go through each of the different options you have so that you know you, you can understand all the different things you can do with audiences so we're going to start basically from the top and go down so it starts with custom audiences um, so we could start with a customer file. So what we're going to do is upload one of our customer files, uh, basically from our MailChimp list for Beachfront Decor. Uh, so that's going to be the brand that we're going to be advertising for today. It's going to be Beachfront Decor. It's not actually going to be for Surfside PVC. The other option you have is if, or two options, but if you import directly from MailChimp. So we use MailChimp, so I would actually, this is something that you can do because what it's going to do is connect it and you can actually set up so when new people are added, um, you can keep it, keep adding them. And then a customer file with lifetime value. This is what you want to do if you have like an e-commerce website. And let's say you can track email to, you know, how much revenue that person has spent with you. Uh, so let's say you have like your top 10% of customers spends a ton of money with you. You can actually upload that and target them on Facebook. And then the other cool thing is they'll create lookalike. So it's saying include lifetime value for better performing lookalike. So they'll find the people that spend the most money with you and find, you know, other people on Facebook that are very similar to them. So you can, you know, find new customers. So let's start with add customers from your own file. 
So um, they have a you can download their file template here. Um, these are all the different things that you can add um, as columns in a CSV file. Um, so if you come over here, it's kind of make it a little bit easier to understand. So you can add as many emails as you want here. For each row, it's going to be counted as like one person. I will start row two. Uh, row one, you're going to need all different headers here. And then each row is going to be trying to map to a different person. So you enter a bunch of emails if you have them. Let's say you have two emails for somebody, or usually you just have one email, one phone number, different things like that. So what you're going to do is have a, you know, a file like this with email in the top. You know, maybe you have phone. Uh, maybe you have first name, last name, different things like that, and then you just want to enter the data all the way down like this. So my file looks just like this. It's just emails down a file just like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it now. I have to skip a step because I can't show you the actual emails on my file, and it's going to prompt me for that. Um, so I'm going to upload it and then get my file ready in Facebook. Okay, so first I uploaded it here, so now I'm going to click Next. Okay, so now it's showing my audience data was uploaded. This is a pretty small list. There's only 328 total rows on it. So now it's going to say here, it might take a few minutes for us to finish matching your customers, but it's all done now. Um, you can create a lookalike audience if you, if you want, but we're going to do that in uh, the next steps. Um, so you can see here, this is my uploaded uh, email list, and it's just updating the audience here to try to find the size on Facebook. So it's mapping the emails I just uploaded to people's emails on Facebook. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory. So that's that's how to use custom audiences um, and upload a customer file. There's a lot of different options you have there, so just keep in mind all the different things you could do. Uh, so now website traffic. So this is probably the most popular that people use for retargeting and audiences. Um, so it's going to say include people who meet any of the criteria. In the previous video, we went over how to add a uh, pixel to your WordPress website. Uh, if you have another web website, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go in Facebook, you go in your pixel section. Uh, it's close to where we click on audiences when you click on the power editor menu. Um, and you just click on pixels, create your pixel, and add it to your website. So you could find our, our tutorial on YouTube if you have a WordPress website and it's not added yet. But um, the first thing you could do is add in all website visitors in the past 30 day audience. We already have this, but all you do is just, you know, all visitors 30 days, something like that. Click create audience and it's going to create that audience for you right now. But we're, we want to create a little bit more of an advanced audience so I could show you how to do it. Okay, so a couple of things I want to show you that we can do before you. Uh, get set up with your first audience here but what we're gonna do what you can see here from your events so for my events all I'm tracking is page views I track when people search and then I can see when people view just view my content and then general event is basically a page view um, it's just not anything serious uh, so basically I'm just tracking page views so I could do you know any page views in the past 30 days um, but based, if you have like a Shopify website for example there's gonna be events here that's gonna be something like add to cart uh, there's going to be events like purchase. Um, so if you have an e-commerce type website, you can actually have different events here. Um, so one of the cool audiences that you can create is like add to cart. So let's say someone add to cart, but they don't purchase. You can actually target them with your ads. So that's something to keep in mind with an e-commerce website. I want to make sure you can know that. So if you have like a Shopify website or any of the big, you know, really any of the the, the e-commerce platforms, you know, Volusion, any of them, you're going to have events that show up here and you can actually optimize for them and target people who fill out those events. So... Another option you can do is visitors by time spent. So you can set up something like, you know, this person's been on my website for, or anybody who's been on my website for three minutes, add them to an audience. So if people are interacting with your content a little more, they're going to show some interest. So that's just something that, that might help you is visitors by time spent instead of targeting people with specific websites or, you know, web pages. So that's what we're going to do actually do next is I want to show you how to create audiences basically for different categories on your website. So usually most websites aren't just like one size fits all. There's going to be some different things where people have different interests. Um, so for beachfront decor, what we want to do is take anybody who's visited either of these two bedding pages. Um, so this page includes all of the products that we have. Um, so, you know, all the different categories, every single thing. And they're all going to be uh, under here because the way we have our URL structured, it's going to say product category bedding comforter sets, and then it's going to say blue stripe bedding. Product category bedding comforty sets, and then it's going to say boho bedding. So we have everything set up properly here, so that all we need to do is take this URL here. Don't even add beachfront decor, just take the back part of the URL. Come back into audiences, do URL contains, and then click enter. So now we have URL contains, product category bedding, comfort uh, bedding comforter sets. Um, and then we're also going to do, or it contains ultimate guide to beach theme bedding sets. So these are both popular pages. 
Uh, this one's going to include a ton of different pages on here, but this gets a ton of search engine traffic. Uh, so what we want to do is come back up here and go to or. So now what we're doing is we're telling Facebook, anybody who visits this page or this page, we want to add them to an audience so that we can target them with probably a betting related ad. Um, so what you want to do is do something like betting audience, you know, however you want to name it, and then the number of days I usually do sometimes just depends. Um, if you want to have more of like a, you know, narrow it down a little bit, let's say you have a ton of website traffic, you can do and also. So for example, I want someone that's visited this page or this page and also visited another page. Um, I don't want to do that because I don't want to narrow them down too much. I just want people that have some interest in betting right now that haven't converted yet. Um, I don't have a conversion on my website. It's, it's more of an affiliate type website, so there's not actually a checkouts handled. Um, so what we're going to do is click its audience name. We're going to do betting audience. Anybody who's visited either of these two pages, um, and this page includes you know, all of our product category pages, all of our product pages, different things like that. So there's going to be a ton of different options here. Um, so we're going to click create audience here. All right, so now it's going to say it's custom audience was created. It's going to start populating now. It's a custom audience here. Um, so that's how you just create your remarketing audiences here. So our website traffic, this is just all visitors. Um, so it's just the, the default audience that they create automatically. So pretty self-explanatory when you're going to custom audience with website traffic. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in terms of your events. So if you have the e-commerce store, that's where I'd highly recommend spending your time here. Um, work on targeting people who haven't purchased yet. Work on targeting people who have entered product, you know, who have added to their cart, who have added, you know, purchase info. There's all sorts of different events that you can work with here. Um, so you definitely want to do that if you have a, an e-commerce type website. Okay, so two things we're not going to go over as much is under custom audience here, you can do app activity. So basically if you have an app added to your Facebook account, um, we don't, so you can just add it here, um, and then you can do, you can set up audiences the same way that we set up um, website traffic audiences, so you could just do anybody who's used my app, um, anyone who's, you know, used it in the past 30 days, uh, anyone who's played this specific game and got to this part of it, so there's different things you can do there with app activity. Um, offline activity, so definitely more of an advanced feature. Uh, so again, if you have like a barber shop like we showed before, what you would do with offline activity is I'll just create a list of people who have bought uh, to your in-store business, um, and then you can target them in your with your ads. Um, so there's a lot of use cases for this. Obviously, I, I use the barber example because when you go, usually they ask for you know name, phone number. Um, they might ask for your email address to send your receipt or something like that. Um, so it's something you want to do and then upload that data there so then you can target them on Facebook. It's definitely a great uh, great, great idea by Facebook. And I know Google AdWords is using this as well. Um, so engagement, this is fairly uh, not new, but they're just constantly adding uh, new options to it. So what you can do is do, so video. So if you have videos on your Facebook or Instagram, you can create a list of people who have, you know, taken any time to engage in your video content. We don't have a ton of video content. Um, so for Surfside PPC, this would actually work well. Um, well, because we upload videos to Facebook a decent amount, and we have some people engage with them, but it probably wouldn't be large enough for us to target yet. Um, so lead form, if you're trying to get leads, so let's say for Beachfront Decor, we have a giveaway. So let's say I want to uh, drive leads to my newsletter. Um, that's basically how we built our MailChimp audience. I can create a lead form on Facebook or Instagram, and then you can see anybody who's opened or completed it. Uh, you can target them with your ads. So full screen experience, if you have a Canvas ad on Facebook, if you ever created a Canvas ad, um, and we've created a few of them. They work pretty well. Um, anybody who's actually worked with your Canvas ad, you can target them on Facebook to create an audience based on those people. Um, so Facebook page. So what you can do here is anybody who's interacted with your Facebook page, you can target. So let's come in here and I say, um, so you want to click the, the right page here. So we have beachfront decor. Um, so what we're going to do is include people who meet any of the following criteria, people who engage with your page in the past 365 days. So what I could do is just create an audience, Facebook engagement, 365 days, and then create audience. Okay, so now it's created, simple. Um, so anybody who's engaged with our Facebook page in the last 36, 365 days, uh, we're going to add them to an audience here. Uh, so coming over to create audience again, uh, coming down to custom audience and engagement. Um, so one of the other cool things we like to do is Instagram business profile. Um, so you should have your Instagram page connected to your business, uh, your Facebook business page. Uh, so what you want to do is click on that. Um, so what we're going to do is 
include people who meet any of the following criteria. They've engaged with beachfront decor in the past 365 days. So this is our Instagram page. So what we're going to do is do Instagram engagement 365 days and then create audience. Okay, so now that's created. So we've created four audiences here. One is our email list that we uploaded. Um, the other one is our betting audience. So that's just based on people who have visited one of the two pages, um, either or. Um, so we have our Facebook engagement audience. So anyone who's engaged with our Facebook page, we can target. Uh, and then we have our Instagram engagement audience. So anyone who's engaged with our Instagram page, we can target. So this is a pretty good starting point for audiences to target. Obviously, you don't want to create each audience you kind of want to separate out into different targeting you don't really want to combine them too much i mean you can combine like some of your engagement audiences uh if we had multiple betting audiences so maybe we just create a ton of different you know betting audiences if if we have huge audiences there you can combine them um you can combine like your email list with your website traffic so those are some different options you could do um you might as well create as many audiences as possible because there's no downside to creating them um, but what i want to show you now is look like audiences um so Basically, you can create a lookalike audience off of anything. Um, and when you're when you're creating a lookalike audience, the key to remember is that you want to find the people that are most likely to buy from you. So what I usually start with with a lookalike audience is if I have a buyer's list, I just upload them right away and create a lookalike audience off of them. Because the people who buy from you, they usually have um, you know specific interests, demographics, locations that are going to match with people who might also be interested in your business. So... If I was going to start, I would probably start with my email list because those are the people that have shown, you know, the most, the most engagement. So what I would do is come down to sub subscribe members export here. This is my email list. Click on it. Um, so location. So what you're going to do is pick the location you want to target. So we're targeting United States. Okay. Um, so it's important for location because you want to make sure you select the right location because it's going to map people to that location. Now, what you're going to do, see here, is 0, 1, all the way to 10. So what it's going to say is audience size ranges from 1% to 10% of the total population in the countries you choose, 1% being those who most closely match your source. So 1% of users, 2.1 million, mostly match our members' export list here. Um, so if we go down to show advanced options just to show uh, some of the different options we have here. So you can actually create new audiences as well. You can create multiple audiences here, um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to do audience size here, 2.1 million, and then click on create audience. All right, so it's going to say lookalike US 1%, and then it's going to say subscribe members export. So we come back here, lookalike audience. So I also like to create a lookalike audience for uh, anybody who's liked our page. Um, so what we do is come down beachfront decor page. Um, so we're going to do United States, 2.1 million again. We're just going to click Create Audience. So now basically it's showing look like people who like beachfront decor, people who have entered their email in our email list. And now let's do one more look alike audience. So uh, one of the cool things that is <clears throat> with look alike audiences is our website traffic is going to pretty much change over time. So there's going to be different times of the year where uh, maybe we have older people visiting, maybe we have younger people visiting, maybe we have more men visiting, maybe we have more women visiting. Uh, maybe we have certain locations that are a little bit more popular. You know, in the summer, it might be a little more popular in, in northern beach regions, whereas, you know, in the in November, December, people in Miami are still probably buying more uh, more beach stuff because it's still nice there. Um, so what we can do is with our website traffic is create a lookalike audience, and it's going to constantly take this audience, which is 30 days, and it's going to keep updating our lookalike audience so that it matches the people most, you know, most closely relevant to those these past 30 days. So it's not just going to be, you know, these people right this minute. It's going to keep updating as we go. So we're going to click create audience. So now we've created some lookalike audiences here. So we have website traffic, people who like beachfront decor, subscribe members export. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is we created this uh, betting audience here. I wouldn't really create too many custom audiences based on something someone's buying at that very moment because someone might just come to our website we get a lot of betting traffic someone might come to our website have no interest in any beach betting um and then you know you kind of create this look like audience where there's all sorts of people on it who aren't interested in beaches they just happen to come to our website by accident because we have some different things going on um you know a bunch of different keywords we're targeting within betting so you don't want to create too many custom audiences you know based on what you're targeting, you really want to think about it and create the people who are most likely to, likely to convert on your website. So 
it's kind of how do you look like audiences. You can keep creating these off of anything you have, you know, whether it's mobile app activity, whether it's your offline event set. Uh, the best thing you can do is upload a list with a lifetime customer value or a list of like a buyer's list people who have bought from you before and then just create lookalikes off that because the most the closer you can get to conversions the better the data that Facebook is going to have to build audiences for you so um, so that's lookalike audiences so the last thing is going to be saved audiences so I highly recommend creating saved audiences in here because it creates consistency into what you're doing so if you go to saved audience and you click on it you just name it and basically you can build custom on it. You can build uh, your own audiences. I'm not going to call them custom because that's what these are called. So let's just say I, you know, do. Okay, so I'm creating a fake audience for the video. So let's say I come down here to custom audiences. I could do, you know, my lookalike hasn't populated yet. A lot of these haven't populated yet. So I'm not going to add my custom audiences here, but you can. You know, I could add my website traffic or something. Um, so let's just say locations. I just want to reach people who live in Florida. And then you just you would go down here, and then you could enter detail targeting, demographics, interest, behaviors. You can enter languages here, um, genders. You can adjust ages. Um, so maybe I just say, you know, I only want to reach people who are above the age of 35. Um, I'll go gender all, language English, detail targeting. So you come in here and, you, you know, maybe I click on one of the suggestions, home decoration and design. So there's a lot of different things you can do there, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you the saved audience I've already created. Um, so I have my saved audience here. Uh, so what's cool is, you know, <laughs> it gets pretty crazy when you're building these. Um, so what I can do is click edit here and just kind of show you how I build audiences for the most part. So um, I drop pins a lot when I'm doing locations. Basically where we're targeting here is, you can see it's just the coast because it's all beach related. Um, we could probably add some more down here, uh, some more up here, different things like that. But a lot of different out, uh, areas that we're targeting, you can see. Um, so age, we're going 45 to 65 plus women because that's the most valuable to us. Um, languages, I should enter English here just to make sure. Um, so now what you can target is we started with net worths and salaries. So we're saying anybody who makes over 150000 here or has a net worth over 500000 um, so those are the two things that we have here. Um, and then we also have some liquidity over here that we're, that we're targeting. So really we're trying to target some high income people because we're selling home decor. So we want to make sure that we're targeting people who have an interest in home decor. Uh, so we're saying, you know, people must ha be a high net worth individual living on the coast who also must have an interest in home decor, interior design, interior design ideas. You know, they've shown interest in all of these types of things on Facebook before, whether it's the pages they follow, things like that. And they must also match, and I just have a bunch of beach type related interest here. So basically what I'm saying is I want to find people who live near the coast, live on the coast, women 45 and up, high income, high net worth, interest in home decor, interest in beaches. And then I'm going to exclude people who already like beachfront decor because I don't want to target people who like my page already. Um, I'd rather use this audience, you know, to find new customers and things like that. If I want to target my own page likes, I can just using the audiences I've created. So... We're going to click update. So now what you can see is I have this audience saved, 99,000 people on it, which is a pretty narrow audience. Um, I've targeted some audiences that were you know, upwards of a million. Uh, you really want to narrow it down, though, and try to find the people that are going to be most related to what you're trying to target. So this is my saved audience here. Um, so I like using saved audiences because you can target them really easily in your marketing campaigns. Um, so this is basically setting up Facebook audiences and how to manage everything. Um, I kind of showed you a little bit just there about, you know, how to go about building some custom audiences and how to, you know, save some new audiences that you can use in the future. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments section. Uh, thank you for watching our video today. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and uh, 